Yeah, because it's... A Minotaur it is. It was hovered over already, the Minotaur. I, I didn't see it, yeah. so I would have just applauded your... Why are you peeking, Mirko? I gotta your be sense, honest bro. with you. I'm not peeking. The cameraman is, man. I'm just I'm just watching the screen, man. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> but with the Minotaur pickup now, I understand it, right? There's the Mathilda, the Barras, they want to go in. The Minotaur kind of stops them. Backline, at least, from jumping in. But Aura can very easily just pick up... Yeah, okay, never mind. I was about to say the X-Board. Just remember that it was banned away. Something for Aran. The Gwyn? Does it play Benedetta? Benedetta. No win. Gonna be Yu Zong instead, so... Jungle Still roll. Aggressive, but not as annoying in a split push context. And they go for the Valentina as well. Solid dive composition. Everyone moving forward right here. How will Araki respond? Do they want to get some kind of tool for themselves? Yeah, I mean, Minotaur's already really good disengage, right? Really good counter engage as well. If Aura Fire want to dive, RQ now, all they're lacking is that jungle position. At this point, I think a safe pick would be something like the Mardis. Yeah. But we do have a comment here from Flap Teasy. To be honest, I believe RQ Hoshi is a strong team. However, they still need to focus and train more because they are still new and their chemistry is not yet solid. I agree with that. Yeah. But this is their journey. This is the journey that they need to go through, the, their arc. Well, you know, it's uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, so... <laughs> <laughs> so if Aura wins right. this, does that mean oh. that Rome will be built in a day? Because it took them a day to adapt from yesterday to today. <laughs> That's true. But you That's know what right. is also true? Fredrin Jungle for RRQ. That is pretty true. I think it's a, a great pick. It provides that kind of quick shot engage potential, and Irad is lethal on this Fredrin. I'm just I'm just concerned about him trying to catch someone and everyone just flying away on the guiding wind, man. Nothing was gonna stop Aura from doing that. That's why I would have preferred the Martis. Mmm. That's a fair point, if you know. The Martis is scary though, right? Because from Aura they have so much damage already. If you can if you if RQ pick the Martis, it's giving away the decimate to Valentina, who can just execute everyone. We did see that as well from Kays. That's how they were able to beat Gugun's Martis. It's tough. Yeah. It truly is. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the deciding match. Will RQ come back and move this to a best of three series? Or will Aura Fire be able to take this two to zero? Welcome to the Land of Dawn for game number two between the Red Dragons and the Soldiers of the Kingdom. The last time Aura were able to beat RRQ was in Season 10. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be only their second time since Season 4. A long record for it to be shattered, but Irad and Fredrin clearing fast, we'll have to see. It's great for the Concussive Blast, which is a trend these days for the faster clear. Clearing just becomes that much more important these days. But Skylar, going with the Brave Smite, probably going for a tanky build instead. In the mid lane though, this trio is gonna be decisive in this in deciding who's gonna arrive on the fights faster. Ooh, the damage coming in from Okta though, like despite the maneuverability coming in from the Batilda, from Yaoi, and the fact that they can clear a lot quicker, Okta's damage is still there. It, it can't be denied in the mid lane. Well, in this game though, RRQ has a lot more tools to try and make this happen in the early game. We already mentioned the combo between the Fredrin and the Valentina. It is absolutely lethal. And this means that Irad can be a lot more active here in the earlier levels instead of just power farming until the turtle spawns. Already going for an invade, but is he going to get punished for it? Not yet. Oh, he just leaves it. Okay, he backs away knowing, spotting due to the information of his teammates, but now they're prepping for a trap here. But at least they do get spotted. Yeah, get a poke over towards Gogun, but the Guiding Wind just gets him to safety very easily. Three QCs, by the way, for Aura. So, already on top of the Guiding Wind mobility, they're so mobile. <laughs> and even for RRQ, by the way, again, with the, with the bold decisions here, no purifies whatsoever, they feel like it won't be necessary. They're gonna just meet Aura with brute force, and now with the turtle already here, Aura once again are the ones proactively just looking for info, controlling. Black Dragon form, Yaoi already spotting everybody as well. Don trying to look for an angle to initiate Minion's Fury. That was stolen away, and now it's gonna be Gugun who secures it. A Furious Dive and a Petrify, and now into the Death and his welcome. A beautiful combination of skills to lock Irad down. 
And that's exactly what they did. A thousand gold lead already built up for Aura. Three minutes in. Just three minutes. And Irad gets taken out in the first. That was, that was, that was really good execution coming in from Aura Fire. Interesting. That's painful because, you know, RRQ, they're intending on snowballing. They have two uh, bargain hunters on their emblems right here, Brusco and Okta. They're trying to scale up and make the place happen earlier on before it becomes a team thing, a 5v5 roaming squad kind of deal because that's where it gets a bit more difficult for RRQ. For now, they can still try and play with the skirmishes, but look at Yaoi on the Matilda, man. The fact that he can be so mobile yet so safe, especially with the Wilderness Blessing and the agility, he's just zooming around, getting info, getting shielding, getting damage. That's why this hero is just so annoying to deal with. That's why when you mentioned like the early game of RRQ, sure, I get it because of the damage, but in terms of mobility, setup, and rotations, because of the Matilda, Aura Fire, I do believe, has a little bit of an edge in this early game. And we see it actually come through. They're able to set up a lot quicker. They're able to make a lot more ganks happen, but here it is. We're going to go all onto Gugun, even a Minus Fury. Good Tetsun is welcome to get him out. Circling Eagle by Yaoi onto Bruce Skull, forcing him to flicker out. And Aura gets out safely. By the way, if you want to mention, wait, he has skill In that bush, Yurad wants to dash for sure, but Yehazkiel has more dashes. Back to the emblems. Actually, notice that for Gugun, he always takes a particular set of emblems here. Thrill. So on the Akai and on the Barats, we did see in game one, Irad didn't go for the thrill. So it's something that's like peculiar about Gugun. And so far, both games, he did secure first turtle with that thrill. So that base damage doing him a lot. Especially on uh, Kira the Barats with uh, a lot of built in extra stats with the stacks, with the passive. Definitely works out well, but it might be a personal preference kind of deal. Back to the turtle setup again, though. Dawn is just trying to find vision, but he can't really do much on the CC. No, not much. Zoned away instantly by the Black Dragon form in Arad as well. Not even going to contest this time. RQ are playing the passive game now. Oh, even in the gold lane, Kabuki winning out against Skylar. Very aggressive, though. Brusco comes in. A good sliding tackle to stun Brusco up. No minions, Fury. And also, Yaoi rotated up. Does he already have Flask? It might be. Turtle Guard, he has kill. Ooh, flickers out of the Appraiser's Wrath, just barely. No, he doesn't fly yet. Okay, so it was just a shield from the Guiding Wind. Yeah. And it's already so massive. Exactly. I don't think he's going to be forced to rush it either, although he might. But again, the same issue for RRQ persists here in game number two. The, the, the bulk of your engages are started by the Fredrin or by the Valentina, and none of them are just significant enough to actually secure the kill before they can fly out on the Guiding Wind. So now for our Q, I think they have to just wait for the objective and then decide on, save the resources for moments like that where they can, they can for sure predict where Aura is going to be. Oh, uh, Yaoi's going back in. Or not. <laughs> or not. They're this waiting for the time, they're waiting for that. Irad taunts in front of Praise. Oh, oh my god, Yaoi got deleted by Irad! A three-man Minus Fury under the turret! Wow! A beautiful counter initiation from RRQ. And even a trade down below. Don, Okta Flicker, terrifying, and a knockup too! An amazing read from Okta on this Vexana. Beautiful 3 for 0 trade with Don in the bottom lane as well. And it looks like RRQ are going to be able to munch their way in that top turret. And that's it. It's a momentum shift for RRQ Hoshi. So one moment out of nowhere there. It's so ideal for them that Yaoi was the first target. And man, Iran wasn't even that low and he just immediately destroyed Yaoi's health bar, man. He got basically one shot by that appraiser's wrath, of course, with the help of everyone else. But that is something that most likely will not happen again. Yaoi will be on his toes this time. Definitely will. Skylar already picking up uh -oh. a next item here. But remember, Gugun is ahead in one level. Do they want to go for this? It looks like they do. Yeskill knocked up, has a minus fury right now. Irad Appraiser's Wrath again! This time onto Yeheskill. Black Dragon form is Dawn. Pops into Vengeance in the back line. 1v4. An interesting decision by Dawn that will not go his way. It's Kabuki who punishes him, but RRQ do not let it go in vain. They get a turret in the mid lane for the trade of Dawn. And it looks like they're going to be able to get their hands on the next neutral objective as well. So that is going to be Dawn traded in for a tower in the mid side, giving them a little bit more room to play with in terms of rotations. And that oh. anchor in the mid lane, but what? Quicker out. 
Skyler. All right. They decide to back off both. Gogun has rotated as well, but they did burn out a flicker from Kabuki. That's massive. I wonder what happens in between games, man, because RRQ, they're looking a lot more alert, a lot more decisive. Definitely. And they are making full use of the bushes, unlike game number one. In game one, they seem to be desperate, like, like running straight towards Aura. Now, they're just pre-positioning into these situations where mm. they can just get an easy access towards Kabuki, towards Yeheskill. And it's working out great for them. Audience prediction has shifted a little bit though here. 69% this time around. Nice. Nice. A little bit less than it was in game number one with Aura. Grasping a little bit more, what do you, what do you call it? Hope, faith. Mm -hmm. Right, a bit more... What, good faith? Yeah. <laughs> not quite, quite sure, but you know, Aura can still prove everyone wrong so far. But look at RRQ, man. They're already setting up on the other side of the map. I want to make sure that they have the setup advantage this time. Because if, if it's an even setup advantage, I do believe that for now, Aura does have a bit of an advantage. Okay. Dawn in the bottom lane has the Vengeance back up right now. Guiding win ready. Kabuki finds the turret. It's traded for believe the tier two up top there. Skyler doing the same thing with the help of Octane Brusco. Gugun's got to be careful. He doesn't even have the big guy stacks. Look at him. He's a small dinosaur uh -huh. in a world of knockups. Two knockups, Brusco and Okta, and that will mean that the purple buff will be going to the hands of Irad. Resources are being taken away from Aura, left and right here. With Kabuki now only at three items. They're still building towards the core three items. And on the other side, for Bruno, it's a lot faster with the House Claws and the Berserker's Fury. He has spiked a lot harder just as, as of right now. And keep in mind, the Flash of the Oasis competed for Yaoi, but not for Brusco. So the next fight is going to be a lot tankier. But Aura is going to be a lot tankier than RRQ would expect unless they spot that difference. So they might want to be a bit more careful in how they want to approach this. Because I don't think Don can zone the whole team like last time. This oh, is scary. Oh, very scary. Kabuki has the house claws though. Black Dragon formed by Aran. Let's see how they respond to this Dawn in the back line right now. Saran's gonna be able to win out the Retribution battle. Kabuki so free hitting in the back right now. That's gonna be the vengeance from the side of Dawn to keep him alive. Brusco taken out right now as Ron jumps into the back. Skyler still able to kite away. Gugun 1 HP. Rad chasing him, knocking him up. A few of the shots and a taunt locking him down. Guiding win, bringing a dive. But RRQ did secure the neutral objective and a better trade. Definitely a 2 for one only losing Brusco in everything that just occurred. Thor is going to be marching down there in the top side. And finally, Brusco has the flask. So when he comes back, when he comes into the... Oh no, Irad? Do they want to go through this? No, they don't. They're going to wait for the Lord first. Now, this is a scary situation, man. RRQ. With a with forward momentum and with Irad oh, just having a Kabuki advantage. Irad is standing there, and I believe he has the blade armor, so he was actually dealing damage to Kabuki. <laughs> funnily enough, RRQ, can they try and get something more right there? They don't have great siege, and I think they will back away. They're waiting. Mm -hmm. Lord is still marching there in the top side. Hasn't quite arrived just yet. RRQ gonna be able to get that buff away from Aura first. Buy them a little bit more time. But here it is, Okta looking for an angle. Will Yaoi be able to make a play? We'll see, not the big playmaker that we expect usually. That's Ooh. a two-man Kabuki, knocked up, still able to survive. Go good. That's just welcome onto Irad, locking him down. Minus Fury from the side of Brusco, diving into the base turret right now as Irad's gonna be able to taunt Yaoi. Appraiser dragged Arch away from Gugun. Good movements back to the o Oasis, giving around enough HP to guiding win with the Furious dive defensively, and they have defended, only losing one base turret. Man, that's a long, drawn-out fight, and yet no casualties. Great plays from both teams, particularly Brusco, trying to zone everyone with the Minuan Fury. And for the side of Aura, man, they were trying to trying to zone, push back Skylar, but with that build, with the, the Brave Smite, it seems like a lot of marksmen right now are just completely comfortable, just sitting right in front of their opposing team, and they think they'll make it out. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, while we're on a little bit of a break here, go ahead and get that code on the GoPay app. Pulsatar Mura. Pulsatar Mura. Pulsatar Mura. <laughs> it's Mura. available only for the first three, 30 people. And you know what? I'm one of them, so you guys need to get that as soon as possible. That's cheating, man. It's okay. Well, uh, we'll have to see, man. But, you know, make sure you use GoPay to get full value because RQ is definitely trying to do so. And keep in mind, Skylar is going for a full damage build. He does not have the, the Brute Force Breastplate. He does not have the... 
Thunderbelt, so he is going to be a bit squishier, and that is something that can be punished. Oh, Gogun's super tanky. So soaking it in, Red Tree. From your rad, only from your rad. Interesting choice, knowing that Lord is going to be spawning now. Oh, oh, Ooh. oh. I thought that would do more damage, but his heal just tanked it up like a boss. Like a boss. Well, Don, which means boss in some uh, in some cultures. He's gonna Don Cheadle. He's gonna have the advantage on the other side of the map. And for now, I think RSQ is trying to bait for a fight, man. I don't think they're actually trying to go for a 50-50 here. They have the level advantage, the gold advantage. And this is what they want. Something to entice Aura to overextend and commit to a fight. They're doing the exact same thing that Aura did to them mm -hmm. in game number one. Exactly the same. Look at the way that they're playing. No ult on Don. Yeah, his kill has him in his fury. Gogun walking forward. Circling Eagle on the sky with the Black Dragon form following it up. Yeah, his kill. Minus Fury. Appraiser's man not connecting oh. around in the back line. And in a 2v1. But it's going to be Don doing the same thing, but winning this time around. Aran still with the help of the Guiding Wind. Yaoi very low. Still running away. The last hit not able to connect. As that's also Kabuki. And yeah, his kill versus the Rad. A flicker backwards. Don. But done. Finds the winning play with Okta. Now it's only one. The Black Dragon Aran in the base against four members. And RQ are deciding two members in the mid. The other two trying to end. Aran clearing the wave. Don still in the front, giving Skylar enough room to go for the stack. Six seconds for Gugun. They're still trying to clear the wave in the mid lane now. RQ looking for a possible end angle. Gugun's back up. Minion wave up top. They should be able to get a base turret, but I'm not too sure if they made the right call. The Lord was up for grabs for free. But they didn't go for it. They wanted to go for an end, but they weren't able to do that. The death timers worked perfectly in favor of Aura Fire, and now RRQ have to go in for the reset on the Lord once again with all five members back up. But this, is my, this might just be part of the plan. RRQ, they need this Lord up to bait Aura out again. So going for the base turret, now they have Pryo in the lanes. Now they can try and force Aura to an even worse fight. And it's it can be just the exact same story. Irad and Dawn just zoning the whole back line and making sure that Skylar and Brusco just do their thing and survive in the back. We'll have to see, man. Aura, can Gugun do it for his team? The Lord is already a quarter of HP. Dawn is trying to go in that mid lane. Yaoi, Flask of the Oasis with the Guiding Wind. He's trying not to 15 heal yet. them back up. Not 15, you're right. Irad has a level advantage. Black Dragon form. Here it is. Appraiser's Wrath with the combo and the retribution. Around in the back. Gugun trying to save the back line. Meanwhile, they're all trying to dive. Kabuki. Irad in the front. Also with the Minus Fury used up by Yeheskill. Kabuki is still there, kiting away now with the Flask of the Oasis. But Yaoi sacrifices his life. Skylar finds a double. It's only Aran and Skylar is hungry for some dragons. Irad picks up the last kill in this game. That's 15 to 4 in 15 minutes and 40 seconds. They find the Lord and everything. RRQ prolongs the series. We're going to get a third game. Welcome to game number three, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. RRQ with a wiped out in the last second of that series. Hey Rash, it looks like we're going to game number three, bro. Game three is what it's all about. <laughs> Man, that was intense. That was a different RRQ. They let go of the Mathilda, man. That